I want to love him better cause he died for me. I want to love him better cause he set me free. I want to love him better as the moments fly. I want to love him better as the days go by. I want to love him better cause he died for me. I want to love him better cause he set me free. I want to love him better as the moments fly. I want to love him better as the days go by. I want to love him better cause he died for me. I want to love him better cause he set me free. I want to love him better as the moments fly. I want to love him better as the days go by. I want to love him better cause he died for me. I want to love him better cause he set me free. I want to love him better as the moments fly. I want to love him better as the days go by. I want to love him better cause he died for me. I want to love him better cause he set me free. I want to love him better as the moments fly. I want to love him better as the days go by. Well, God bless you. Good morning, Sister Jackson Perry. God bless you and your family. Good morning, Sister Kathy. God bless you, Brother Butler and the family. Good morning, Keith. Good morning, Thomas. Good morning, Sister Walker. Good morning, Treat. Good morning, Sister Matthews. God bless you. Good morning, Janiah. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Ingram. God bless you, Robin. Good morning, Sister Coleman. Good morning, Monique. God bless you and the Donaldson family. Good morning, Bailey. God bless you, my friend. Good morning, Sister Stimson. God bless you and Deacon Stimson. Good morning, Sister Dawes. God bless you and Minister Dawes. Good morning, Sister Deborah. Good morning, Katrina. God bless you and your family. Good morning, my friend Angela. God bless bless you. Praise the Lord, Madam Vice President. Good morning, M Lady Winston. God bless you. And Pastor Winston, good morning, Miriam. God bless you and your family. Good morning, Sister Sarah. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Ingram. God bless you. Good morning, Stacy. God bless you. Good morning, Clinette. God bless you. Good morning, Elaine. Good morning. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Matthews. Good morning, Sister Riley. Good morning, Roslyn. God bless you and your family. Good morning, Tiana. Good morning, Katina. God bless you and Minister Page and your family. Good morning, Ronza. Good morning, Brother Hudson. God bless you. Good morning, Brother Paul. God bless you. Good morning, Robin. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Margot. God bless you. Good morning, Deacon Briggs. God bless you and your family. Good morning, Deacon and Mother Wilson. God bless you both. Good morning, Missionary Bryant. God bless you. Good morning, Bishop Desmond Alde and Lady Alde. God bless you both. Good morning, Missionary Johnson. God bless you you. Good morning, Tiana. Good morning, Sister Cheek. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Jenkins. God bless you. Good morning, Mother Wilson. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning, Mary. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Lewis. God bless you. Good morning, my dear friend Terry. God bless you and Deacon Walker. Good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord, Sister Roberts. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Margaret. God bless you and Brother Kenneth and the family. Good morning, Iris. Good morning, Sister Chan. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Cleckley. Good morning, Sister Petlar. Good morning, Mother McCall. God bless you. Good morning, Duchess. God bless you. Good morning, Dr. Hayward. Well, good morning and praise the Lord, everybody. And welcome to the morning prayer with Pastor Reginald Davis. And as always, it's an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to be able to spend a few moments with you with a biblical meditation and in prayer. For more things have been wrought by prayer than the world will ever know and we continue to witness the manifestation of the power of God in the lives of people. I thank God today because he keeps making a way. Yes, he does. He keeps making a way. He keeps opening doors. He keeps blessing people in abundance. And I'm excited because all of these things build our faith. When we see the Lord touching and healing and delivering and just doing what we know he is able to do, it just strengthens and edifies 
exercise our faith. It helps us to hold on. It helps us to trust God even more. And we see what the Lord is doing in the lives of people. So as always, if you have a prayer request, we want you to share it. If you're on Facebook, please place it right in the chat or you can inbox Reginald Davis or inbox Refuge Temple Church. If you are on Instagram, you can place it right there in the chat or you can direct message Pastor RJD. And to everybody on the conference call, and we thank God and love our conference call listeners, to everybody on YouTube or anybody, you can text in your prayer request to 336-567-5358. Again, that number is 336-567-5358. Text those prayer requests. We are believing God with you. We are adding them to the prayer list, and we are praying and joining our faith to your faith, believing that God is indeed able to do exceeding and abundantly, excuse me, above all that we ask or even think. God is indeed able, and we know and we trust him to be the able God that he is. I want us to move now to the book of Revelation. We are continuing our study of this book, and we are moving into chapter 6. We are moving into chapter 6, the opening of the book, the opening of the seals, and we're going to be sharing this morning. So you can find us in Revelation chapter number 6. Revelation chapter 6, and we are going to begin reading at verse number 1. Revelation chapter 6, and we're going to conclude at verse number um, 8. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw and behold a white horse, and he that sat on him with a bow, and a crown which was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, that they that should, should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. Behold, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him with a pair of balances in his hands. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts saying, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see, thou hurt not the oil and the wine. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and on his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him, and power was given unto him over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. And the Lord sanctified the reading of his word in our hearts. I want to talk about the four horses of the apocalypse. The four horses of the apocalypse. The section that we're going to enter is lengthy. It covers really chapters 6 through chapter 19, and it details the judgments and the events of the time of tribulation. And this is one of the revelations of this book, is the period that we call the Great Tribulation. The Great Tribulation. And so we're going to be studying in detail this time. Um, if you read in other parts of the Bible, it's called the 70th week of Daniel. Um, we're living right now in the 69th week. But there is a 70th week of Daniel, which is the tribulation. It's also the time of Jacob's trouble, according to Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 7. It's called the day of the Lord or the day of Jehovah, according to Zephaniah chapter 1, verses 14 through 18. And as I said, there were 70 weeks that were listed to determine um, upon thy people and the holy city to finish the transgressions, to make an end of sin to make reconciliation of iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness 
and to seal up the vision and the prophecy and to anoint the most holy. This is found in Daniel chapter 9 and verse 24. So this notion of this the week is the notion of seven years, um, but they're not necessarily chronologically. The tribulation is indeed a seven year period, according to the word. The 69 weeks have already transpired and there is one week yet to be fulfilled. And, it, and, and we're in that waiting period from the time of the rebuilding of Jerusalem until the death of the Messiah, Jesus Christ at Calvary. And according to Daniel, there are six reasons or six purposes for the 70 or the 70th week. And that is to finish the transgression. It is going to bring an end to sin as we know it. To make an end of sin, he will put an end of sin in, in, in the, in the all-inclusive sense. He will make reconciliation for iniquity. That means he will atone um, for perverse action. He will bring in everlasting righteousness. He's going to usher in because after the tribulation comes the millennium that we'll talk about. He will seal up the vision and the prophecy. In other words, he will bring a final fulfillment to what we're reading in Revelation. And he will anoint the most holy or the holiest of holies in the future temple. And so this whole notion... Um, it really begins what we are going to study concerning the tribulation. And chapter six is um is an abrupt ending. You know, when we were reading chapter four and five, we were rejoicing because we were rejoicing around the throne of God. We were rejoicing with God and we were rejoicing the Lamb of God, the Savior, Jesus Christ, who come to save the world. But now we're going to deal with what will take place after what will take place after the rapture. The church is raptured. And one thing that you will notice is that you will not see, per se, the church engaged or involved in the tribulation other than the tribulation saints. And there will be some tribulation saints. We'll talk about that in detail when we get to that section. But what you're seeing is the judgment of God being poured out unfettered upon the earth. All of this is God's judgment, first against Israel, because Israel directly rejected Jesus Christ as the Messiah. They called him a liar. They called him a blasphemer. They called him a bastard, a wine bibber. And the Bible says when he came into his own, his own received him not. So part of the reason for the tribulation is because Israel did not embrace, accept, nor receive Jesus Christ as the Messiah. And so the, the judgment is coming in order because the Bible says in um, Thessalonians that because they would not believe God's going to send them a strong delusion. We're going to talk about that in a moment. He's going to send them a strong delusion. And that's exactly what the Antichrist or who the Antichrist is. He is the strong delusion. He is the strong delusion. Now, the first seal is broken and the first four seals are are the release of the four horses and the horsemen of the apocalypse. The four horses and the horsemen of the apocalypse. They're in the first four seals. And we're going to try to cover them in this context. If we don't get it today, we'll pick it up tomorrow. That we're going to unpack these first four. All right. With the first four um, seals that are open. And once again, this takes place after following the rapture. That's why the church is not mentioned in detail because the church, as we know it, is not going to, is not going to endure the tribulation. The Bible says he would deliver us from great tribulation. And it is a biblical principle that the righteous and the wicked do not suffer together, not in mass. The righteous and the wicked do not suffer in mass together. So let's walk through here and walk through the seals. The first seal is open. And the Bible says he heard one of the four beasts saying, come and see, meaning he's invited to participate. In other words, proceed to go further. And and, and so he, he, this word comes out, come and see. And there is what a there is a man on a white horse, a white horse. And the white is the color of peace. All right. And it is supposed peace. The rider is the Antichrist. The rider of the white horse is the Antichrist. And the reason why there's he's on the white horse is because he's bringing supposed 
peace. It's not real peace. In fact, because he promises peace, the nations of the earth are going to cede their authority to the Antichrist. They're going to give it over to him. He's not going to take it by force. He's not going to take it in some kind of armed resistance. But just on the deception alone, the nations of the world are going to deceive, are going to be deceived, and they're going to give their authority. Imagine Russia, the United States, the United Kingdom, France, England, Germany, all of these nations voluntarily giving their sovereignty over to the Antichrist because he's promising great things. Look at the description of the Antichrist in, in, in verse number two. And I saw and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him had a bow. Now he has a bow, but no arrows. Anybody notice that? He has a bow. A bow is what you shoot arrows with. So he has a bow but no arrows, which symbolizes the fact that he does not really have any real power. He's a deceiver. He's a liar. He doesn't have any real authority. They're going to give him authority. That's why the Bible says a crown was given unto him. He didn't earn it. He didn't fight for it. He didn't make it happen, but it was given to him and he went forth conquering and to conquer. So he, he literally took sovereignty, authority, and leadership away from them. He took it away. That He deceived them out of it. All right. And he's the Antichrist. He's the Antichrist that shall be revealed. Revealed, all right, the world's going to follow the Antichrist out of desperation. He will be revealed at the beginning of the tribulation. And the Bible says the mystery of iniquity doth already work. That means iniquity is already afoot in the world. It's in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 7 through 8. And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. So they believe that he's going to make these peace trees. With, with the nations of the world. Imagine somebody saying, I can make peace between the Arabs and the Jews. All of this. That's why he has a bow without arrows. Meaning he's going to intimidate. He's going to um, deceive. But there's no real power to him. And he's called by a number of names in the scripture. He's the Antichrist in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 18. He's called the man of sin in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 3 through 4. He's called the wicked one in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 8. He's called the abomination of desolation. That's in Daniel chapter 9 and verse 27, but also in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 15. He is called the beast. In Revelation chapter 13 and 11, he's called the son of perdition in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 3. He's called the little horn, little power. Horns represent power. He only has a little power. Revelation chapter 7 and verse 8. His number, we'll talk about it later, is in Revelation 666. He's called the prince in Daniel chapter 9 verses 26 and 27. And I want you to notice that they're going to see to him, they're going to give over to him the authority of the nations. He's going to make a peace treaty. He's going to make an alliance with the nations. It's found here. And I'm going to read it in Daniel chapter 9 and verse 26. And after three score and two weeks shall the Messiah be cut off. This is talking about the crucifixion, but not for himself. And the people of the prince shall come and destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with a flood. And upon the end of the war, desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week shall he cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of, of abominations, he shall make it desolate. Even until the consummation that determined shall be poured out upon the desolate. This is a prophecy concerning the Antichrist. He's going to allow them to rebuild the temple. He's going to allow the Jews. That's why the Jews are going to follow him. Because he's going to allow the Jews to rebuild the temple. Right now, on the site of the temple out Mount Zion is the Dome of the Rock, which is a Muslim mosque. It's sitting there on Mount Zion. That's why if you've ever been to the Holy Land, you go to the Western Wall with the only remaining wall of the temple. And that's where the Jews pray. They pray to the Messiah because on the site of their temple is what? 
is a mosque. But that mosque is going to be removed and they're going to be able to rebuild the temple and they're going to begin offering sacrifice. But the Bible says while they're offering sacrifice, the, the Antichrist is going to enter into the temple and say what? Don't worship Jehovah. Don't worship God. Worship me. And that's when Israel rebels against the Messiah or against rather the Antichrist. And that's when the Antichrist is going to seek the destruction of Israel. This peace is going to be short-lived. All people are going to be excited. They're going to be so excited because for the first time in the world, there's peace. But the Bible says that when they cry out peace and safety, suddenly destruction will come. Suddenly destruction will come. This is the first seal. This is the first piece of this revelation of the Antichrist. The Antichrist coming as a false Messiah. And, and very much the same way that Jesus Christ is the embodiment of God, the manifestation of God, God in flesh. The Antichrist is going to be Satan in flesh, a cheap imitation, a cheap copy of what is God, a cheap copy of the things of God. And they're going to he's going to deceive. That's why he has no arrows in his bow. He has no real power. He is a deceiver. Hey, God, he's a deceiver. And you know, that, and, and because this world is refuses to look for Christ, they're going to be deceived by the Antichrist. Be by Bible says because they would not believe God will also send them a strong delusion. He's a delusion, saints. He's a delusion. He's a delusion that is being sent because humanity will not obey God. But this comes after the rapture, after the church is taken out, because that's why he's going to have the influence. You know, the Bible says that the church is the salt of the earth. We are preserving the earth. We're the light of the world. And even though the world is sinful, it cannot be but so sinful because the church is here. But when the church is taken away, there is no barrier, there is no buffer, there is nothing to prevent the coming of the Antichrist. And that's the first seal. The Antichrist is the first seal. And if this is not a warning, oh my shataye, to the church, if this is not a warning to the people that we need to be saved before it is too late, before the Antichrist Christ is revealed because I'm not looking for the Antichrist. I'm looking for the Messiah. Oh God, Jesus Christ that's going to come and rapture the church. I'm, I'm just starting. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Thank you, Jesus. My gracious God, I love you. I thank you for life and health and strength. I thank you for your tender mercies. I thank you, God, because you continue to show mercy upon the people. And Lord, I thank you just for being able to wake up this morning. Lord, in my right mind, able to get out of the bed, able to get prepared to join this great cadre and fellowship of believers, Lord, from all over the world. I thank you for my brothers and sisters who have joined morning prayer, whether they've come by Facebook or Instagram or conference call or YouTube. Thank you that we're here. Thank you that we're able to gather. Thank you for the word that you are instilling in our hearts now. And Father, I pray, my God, that you would just fill this space with your glory, this anointed space, this prayer room. Oh God, whether we've come by Instagram, conference call, Facebook, or YouTube, God, bring in your glory right now so that we know that we're in this fellowship now, that we're in this place, my God of blessings and deliverance, my God of bringing breakthroughs. Lord, send your anointing now. And Lord, send the release of unexpected favor upon everybody, my God, that is here. As we pray for the names that are on the prayer list, names everywhere. God, people in every ch in the chat, oh God, on in Instagram, in messages, Lord, whatever the prayer request has come from, we offer those names now. We're praying, my God, first for the unsaved. Lord, anybody that's listening, watching, that is outside of the ark of Satan, safety, any of our loved ones that are unsaved, any of our friends, Lord, the entire world that has yet
yet to accept you. God, we're praying today that you would reach out to them, that you would minister to them, that you would send us as credible witnesses, Lord, to reach them before it's too late. Lord, save, Gashana. Oh, God, prick their hearts, prick their minds, God, in the name of Jesus, that they might accept and believe the word and come to you and be born of the water and of the spirit, God. We're praying for Kevin Moore today. We're praying, my God, for Karen Robinson and family. We're praying for Kimberly Clark and her family. We're praying for the McAfee family. We're praying, my God, for the United Refuge Church of South Carolina. We're praying for marriages today. We're praying for Nikki and Serenity. We're lifting up Justin Edwards today. We're praying for Ellen, uh, Elaine Nicholson and her family. God, we're lifting up Deacon Willie and Mother Barbara Davis and the family. God, we're praying for Chris. We're praying for Jarrell Long. We're praying for Sister Crowder's son. We're praying for the Salvation Church of Christ. My God, that you would bless that ministry. We're praying, my God, for Miracle Smith. Lord God, deliver this young girl in the name of Jesus Christ, set her free by the power of the Holy Ghost. We're praying for DJ. We're praying for the McAfee family. We're praying for the Amerson family. We're praying for the Mingo family. We're praying for the Jones family and the Watson family. I'm praying, my God, for Deacon Henderson today. I'm praying for everybody that needs strength. I'm praying for every backslider. God, that you would restore my God and reclaim. I'm repaying, oh God, I'm praying today for everyone that might be discouraged. Lord, that you would deliver them wherever the oppression is, wherever the affliction is. God, that you would deliver because we know that you're able. God, stretch out your mighty hand of strength and grace now in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I'm praying for the sick this morning. I'm praying for Tessa grandson. Lord, that you would touch and heal. I'm praying for Eureka Harrison. I'm praying for missionary Jesse Brisbane, for missionary Hodges, for Joseph Riley, for Stephanie's father. I'm praying for that baby Miracle Destiny. I'm praying for Jack and Mary Simpson, for Sheila Howard, for Mother Garvey this morning. I'm praying for Alexis Smith and Lamont Edwards. I'm praying for Joyce Young, for Marlene Kelly. Oh God, for Miss Ann Bass Knight. I'm praying for Robert Moore, for Belinda Cross. I'm praying to today, my God, for Tony Williams. I'm praying for Jimmy Jameson today. I'm praying for Edna Johnson, God, for Marlene Roseman. I'm praying for Clyde Stanton. I'm praying for Aaron Christian's mother today. I'm praying for Flossie Roseford, God. I'm praying for Kamisha Blunt Robinson. Every name, Lord, that is sick, my God, stretch out your healing hand. Remember Angela today, oh God, in recovery. Remember Zenobia today in recovery and bring your healing virtue. God, look on on Bishop Alfonso Brooks, Mother Shirley Clark, Mother Evangeline Jenkins. Look on Mother Carol Coleman today, Lady Andrea Maxwell, Sister Shakaya Polk. I pray healing today for Bishop Alvin Palmer, for Bishop Mac Vincent, for Bishop Irving Taylor, for Bishop Gregory Wilder, for Apostle Leroy Joseph today, for Apostle Charles Williams, for Apostle, my God, Sylvester Norwood, everybody everywhere that is sick. We pray for Brother Wiggins today, Brother and Mother Sherrod, Deacon and Mother Garland right now. Now. We're praying for Dr. Hayward, Sister Hayward, Dr. Hayward's mother. We're praying today that you remember Mother Jill, Mother Pride. God, we're praying today. Oh God, for Mother Chambers, Mother Carter, Mother Moorhead. We're praying today for Lady Staten today. Everybody, God, remember my God, Pastor Carr, Minister Carr. My God, look to Elder Tyson and Elder Smith. Lord, we're praying today for Mother Foster, Henry J, Brother Cliff. God, let your healing virtue flow. God, remember, oh God, God, Mother Holman, Mother, oh God, Tanaj, Missionary Simmons. We're praying today, my God, for Cynthia, Catherine, and Duchess. We're praying, God, that you would remember in the name of Jesus. Marlette today, oh God, look on Maurice, God, with your healing virtue. Look on Tony today. Look on Kimberly, God. Look on Chris. Look on Dennis, my God, and heal. Lord, walk into every hospital today, God. Oh God, walk into every rehab center, every nursing home. God, walk into the COVID ward, the cancer award. Walk into the dialysis unit, God. In the name of Jesus, go there, my God, into the ICU unit and bring healing. And anybody watching this morning that's sick in their bodies, God, I'm praying for healing for them now. Remember Deacon Grant this morning. Remember Missionary Domingo. Remember Mother Wilson. My God, remember Carl today. Everybody, everybody that needs healing, God, look on Miss Pat. Look on Jennifer today in the mighty name of Jesus and bring your healing. 
healing virtue. Lord, I'm praying today because I know that you're the bomb in Gilead. Lord, we're praying today for grieving people everywhere. Everywhere, God, we're, be, we're being touched, Lord, by people who have lost loved ones. We're praying, my God, that you would remember. Mary White, that you would remember the Allens family, the Pinnell family, the Perry family. God, look on the Evans family today. Everybody that's grieving a loss, my God, we're praying for them, that you would comfort them where they are. Look on the Robinson family. Look on James Roseboro and family, the Hill family, the Rose family, Raven Brown and family, the Curry family, Dolores Moore today. Look on the family of the families of shooting victims. Look on the families of the people who are lost in Turkey and Syria. Look on the Smith family, the Stokes family. God, we're praying for the Morris and Carney family. We're praying, my God, for Takesha Hill and family. We're praying for Ken today, for Rosalind Thorpe. Lord, everybody that's grieving, we're praying today that you would remember my God, Lady Andrea Maxwell and her family. God, Dr. Phyllis Carter and her family. God, look on Bishop Michael Field, Shekinah and their families. God, we're praying today that you remember Mother Ida Harrell and her family. That you remember Mother Jacqueline Grant and her family today. Lord, remember my God, the Groovers, the Kramers today. Remember the Hargrove family, the Blunt family. God, give comfort today and give grace and peace in the name of Jesus. We pray for the Bonhams, the Taylors, the Lloyds, the Carters, the Giles family, God. We pray today for the Meadows family, the Moyers this morning. We pray for the Perkins family. God, we're praying today for the Dockery family. We're praying for Sister Pam, my God, her mother, hallelujah, and her sisters. We're praying for the White family. God, give grace and comfort. Remember Anita and the Brian Hopkins family. Remember Margie and the McLean Melvin and Street families. Remember the Ransom family today. Remember the Newkirk family. Remember the Green family. Remember the Ned family. Family, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, and give comfort in the precious name of Jesus. Remember Brenda and the Allen McNeely family, Sean and Monique and the Gary Porter family, Trell and Ryan and the Allen Williams family, Tommy and Michelle and the Clark family, the Smith family today. God, look on every grieving family, the Mays, the Dunlaps, the Purdy's, the Sneeds, the Washington Fields family. My God, we pray for grace. My Upon the Winninghams, upon the Bankses, the Middletons, the Tay God, we're praying today for the Felix family, for the Sapata family, for the Mannix, the Boodrums, the Gleans, the Arthurs. God, we pray for the Briggs family today, for the Matherins, Lord. We're praying today for Pastor and Lady Mannix. We're praying today for Pastor Stevens. God, give comfort today. Look on the Davises, my God. Hallelujah, the Allens, the Caldwells, the Hayses, the Moors. Look on, my God, the Harbisons. Look on the Austins and the Adams. Every grieving widow, widow, word, child, parent, sibling, loved one. God, give Give them comfort in the name of Jesus. God, I'm praying today for the church. I'm praying for the church. I'm praying for the church, God. Look on every apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, every bishop and elder, every first lady, all the pastor's children, Lord, mothers and missionaries, ministers and deacons, all of the young people, my God, in the church, look on them now. God, I'm praying today for musicians, singers, and psalmists. Lord, I'm praying that the church will be ready. Lord, we're not looking for the Antichrist, but but we're looking for you, the Messiah. We're looking for you, God, to rapture us. We're looking for you, oh God, to deliver us, oh God, out of, oh God, even the clutches of the great tribulation. My God, help the church to be ready. Help the church to be vigilant in the name of Jesus Christ. God, today I'm praying for first responders, essential workers, firemen, policemen, EMTs. God, I'm praying today for school employees and students everywhere. I'm praying for everybody that works, Lord, to help other people. Oh, God, in private duty, in hospitals, in rehab centers, nursing homes, my God, rest facilities. I'm praying for those in hospice, God. Lord, cover and protect those that work there. I'm praying for those that work in banks, clinics, offices, stores. Oh, God, construction sites, factories, driving trucks, Lord, wherever they're working, God, cover them because there are diseases everywhere. COVID, RSV, flu, Lord, but we're trusting you for protection, God, in the name of 
of Jesus Christ and we're trusting you for healing in your precious name. Remember everybody, everybody, Pastor Lady Winston, remember Bishop D, remember, oh God, Deacon Adams, Deacon Wilson today, Deacon Harrison, Elder Toll, everybody, God, that needs healing, Apostle Keith, Lord, in the name of Jesus and bring your healing virtue in your precious name. And Lord, as you're healing, oh God, sickness, Lord, heal this land, this land that is so troubled from Russia to the Ukraine to Turkey to Syria to the United States all over the world. God, heal the land from sin. Heal the land from violence. Heal the land from hatred, from jealousy. Heal the land from injustice. Heal the land from racism and sexism. And let your church be the light of the world and the salt of the earth. God, we need you. We need you. So cover us, protect us, and keep us. And we give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Everybody on this line, come on, come on, and give God glory. Everybody on this line, come on and give God the glory, give God the glory, give God the glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Give God the glory, give God the glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is my declaration for today. I am not looking for the Antichrist. Hallelujah. I'm learning about it. I'm studying it, but I'm not looking for the Antichrist. I am looking for the true Messiah. I am not looking for the Antichrist. I am looking for the true Messiah, Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. We, we learned about him. Oh God, the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. I'm looking for Jesus Christ. I'm looking for the true Messiah saints. That's who I'm looking for. Not looking for anybody else, anything else. I'm looking for the true Messiah. Hallelujah. I know he's coming back. Hallelujah. And that's who I'm looking for. That's what I'm living for. That's what I'm trying to make myself ready to meet him. Thank God for the grace of salvation. Thank God for the mind to be ready because I want to be ready to see and to witness and to celebrate the Messiah. I'm going to be somewhere around the throne. That's where you're going to be, somewhere around that throne. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. I'm trusting that this biblical meditation and prayer has blessed you and that your day is off to a wonderful start. Look, you can stay connected to Refuge Temple all day today. This prayer service is available on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. We thank God for those who join us by conference call. Keep coming. Keep sharing the number. Keep telling people that we are teaching right now from Revelation. And if they want to know, it's taking us a minute because we only have a short time each morning. But we're going to get through this so that we all understand the things that are going to come to pass in the earth. You can also stay connected through our podcast, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, SoundCloud, Spotify. All of these things are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Hallelujah. And you can share them, all right? Our radio broadcast airs every day, Monday through Friday at 8.30 a.m. on GregoryGospel.com. Every morning at 8.30 on GregoryGospel.com. Let me thank every single person that sees and sows and shares with this ministry. Your gifts help us to do the things that we need to do, and we thank God for you, and we thank you. And if you want to be a blessing, you can mail a gift to Refuge Temple Church, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. Again, that's Refuge Temple, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. You can also give online. Our website is www.refugetemple, N is in North, C is in Carolina.com, Refuge Temple, NC.com, and you can give on the donate page, or if you have the GiveLify app, you can share via GiveLify. Just simply search for Refuge Temple. You'll see a picture of the church, and you can make 
make your gift there. Or you can use Cash App. Our Cash App is dollar sign the number one refuge. Dollar sign one refuge is our Cash App, and you can make your gift there. And we thank you for your giving, but we thank you most of all for being a part of this prayer time and how God is blessing us because we are praying, how God is blessing all over the world because we are praying. So please, my brothers and sisters, stay in prayer. Keep telling others about the prayer and please keep praying. And as you pray, pray for me, pray for Lady Davis, pray for our children, pray for my father, pray for my sisters, pray for my in-laws, our nieces, our nephews, our entire family. Pray for Refuge Temple that God would continue to bless us. And let's pray one for another that we might stand and be ready when Jesus comes. The Lord make us ready for the rapture of the church. Until next time, this is Pastor Davis. God bless each of you. Shalom. Shalom.